So hello and welcome to Wednesday Weekly, your bite-sized webinar in collaboration between Action Together, the voluntary community and faith sector and the public sector. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this episode of our Cost of Living Crisis Series. Action Together are working with Oldham Council to welcome you every Wednesday between now and April to hear from the services and organisations that are working alongside you in Oldham, delivering critical help and support to residents through the cost of living crisis. So without further ado, I'm really pleased to hand you over to Natalie from Age UK, who will be taking us from here. Over to you, Natalie. That's great, Gemma. Thanks very much. And uh, good morning, uh, all. Um, my name's Natalie Leach. I'm a service manager at Age UK Oldham. Um, so I'm just coming along today um, just to give you a, a bit of an overview of the range of services that we offer at Age UK Oldham. I'll be a bit like Chris Whitty and be doing next slide, please. So thanks, Gemma. Um, so who are we? We're a local independent charity. And uh, while we're a brand partner with Age UK National, um, all the services that we operate are um, for older people living within the borough of Oldham. Um, and all the income that we generate through our charity shops and contracts are sort of it's independently generated if you know what I mean it doesn't come from age UK national um next slide Gemma so one of our main services is our information and advice service um and every age UK around the country has to offer some level of an information and advice service so um this service, I suppose, is just to, to help people navigate and access services for older people and their families and carers. Um, so it might be support to navigate local um, systems within Oldham, but also some of the um, wider services that affect older people like um, pension age benefits advice, um, assistance with form filling for benefit claim forms, um, blue badges, etc. We don't um, offer support with working age benefits. So although some PIP um, claimants may well be over the age of 65, um, if they've started on that benefit before they reach retirement age, unfortunately, we don't have any experience really in um, working age benefits. So we do tend to stick to attendance allowance forms and um, blue badges, pension credit, those kind of benefits that affect older people. Um, our dementia services, we have two dementia services. One is um, an information and advice service around all things related to dementia. Um, and in particular, dementia pathways, um, often family members might approach us just because they might have a concern um, about a loved one's memory. Um, they don't necessarily have to have um, uh, a formal diagnosis so if somebody's just concerned about memory loss with a, a loved one they're welcome to approach our service and we can give them information on how to navigate the dementia pathways you know how, how to you know approach the GP in order to, to be able to get a memory service assessment and then um, we work really closely with the memory service so um, we attend specific uh, carers dementia carers groups will give information and advice at those groups like springboard there's a dementia hub weekly at uh, dr kershaw's hospice um where you'll have dementia nurses uh, memory nurses age uk um and other other services uh with within that group so um it's just a general information service around dementia uh, and how, um, you know, what particular benefits people might be eligible to from, from dementia and um, things like the council tax rebate, because obviously um, if somebody is living with somebody with dementia and um, the council tax can be reduced uh, upon that diagnosis. Um, and then we also have information around um, dementia specific social activities to try and be um, more inclusive of people with uh, memory loss and um, to be able to access 
local activities and, and still get out there into the community and, and sort of have a, a fuller life with their with their diagnosis. The second uh, service that we offer under our dementia services is um, the dementia carers assessment service. So, you know, every carer is eligible to have a statutory carers assessment to assess their own needs and see what support that carer can have. So, um, AJK Oldham are commissioned by um, the council and Pennine Care to be able to um, complete those statutory assessments specifically for dementia carers. So, um, carers can refer themselves in to our service directly or if they come through the council's caring um, carer centre, those that are uh, caring for someone with dementia will be sent over to Age UK for that statutory assessment. So those assessments are um, reviewed annually. So they will still remain within the Age UK system um, every year when we're looking at those assessments being reviewed. And obviously as part of that assessment, we can look at what needs the carers have, what measures need to be put in place to prevent carer breakdown. And that may include the carer's individual budget, which is, you know, maybe a, a small token um, of, you know, recognition that a lot of unpaid carers are giving up their own time and, um, and to care for a loved one and how that affects their own, their own lives. Um, that's great. Thanks, Gemma. So, um, and as an extension of our dementia services, we offer uh, daycare at Age UK as well. Uh, we've got two sites. One is in uh, Coldhurst at Selina House, um, which is at the back of Franklin House Care Home. Um, and we have um, what a purpose-built building, well, not purpose-built, sorry, it's a home building um, in Moorside. It's the one in the picture there. So it's a residential um, bungalow um, that's been sort of, you know, made quite comfortable for daycare. So we have um, places that are funded through Oldham Council. So, if, you know, if if a person has been deemed eligible for daycare and they meet the funding, the eligibility criteria for funding, they may have places funded through the council. But we also offer uh, privately funded daycare. Um, and I think together with transport to and from, I think the privately funded places are about £55 um, a day from about nine o'clock in the morning till 3pm. Um, and in daycare, you've got companionship, care, um, activities, meals. Um, so it just helps. It's just another service, I suppose, to help prevent care breakdown, uh, which is so important. So again, as part of the support that we offer carers, um, we have our Choosing the Right Care service, which especially for private, private funded care. So if somebody doesn't meet the um, criteria to have um, the care, home care funded through the council, um, we offer information and advice on home care providers, um, their rates, if a family needs support in setting up a private care package, we have a worker that would be able to offer that support. Um, but also through choosing the right care service, we um, work very closely with social services to maintain um, an up-to-date record of the uh, care home vacancies within the borough. So we work really closely with um, hospital social work departments if they're arranging um, residential or nursing care for people leaving hospital. They need to know what places are available, what um, type of care homes are available to suit that individual's needs. Um, so we can work alongside families in helping to uh, identify um, the, the placements that are available. We can support people to go and view nursing homes and, and sort of try and, and reassure families about trying to ask the right questions when they're viewing a care home, what to look out for. We've got access to all the CQC reports and we can provide um, fund, uh, guidance on the um, funding of home care and also very importantly, the additional top up fees. Um, and we've also got um, our 
a couple of services that are newer. It's it's only sort of in the last 12 months or so that we've been involved um, in partnership with Togmind and po Positive Steps to support older people's mental health. Our Steps to Home programme um, facilitates hospital discharges um, from mental health wards um, which are often sort of slower discharges to arrange. People may have been on the wards for a long, long time, so there's a lot of readjustment to coming off those wards. So these, these would be uh, older people with mental health condition, long-standing mental health condition, and or a cognitive impairment. So it may well be that because of a dementia, they've had to be on a ward for a long time. We will support these people to come back home, look at the wraparound services that may they may need. <laughs> to settle back into home um, and uh, then to link them in with other services that we may provide as well as external providers to um, settle them back into the community, attend social groups, things like that. So that's the Steps to, sorry, that's the Steps to Home um, programme. Our Living Well um, service offer similar support, but rather than it being from a hospital discharge, it's supporting older people experiencing those mental health issues or cognitive impairments to remain living well and active within the, their own community. So we'd receive referrals from the community mental health team, um, GPs, district nurses, um, to try and support people, like I said, to, to live independently with, in the community with the mental health condition. Our Home First service is another hospital discharge service. This is probably our newest service. Um, so it's only been around since November. <clears throat> and the aim is to um, facilitate timely hospital discharges and also to prevent an escalation from the community into a, a hospital admission. So if somebody has been is leaving hospital or Medlock Court, Butler Green, we offer a five day follow up discharge service. Um, and that can be offering a range of services It might just be practical things like, um, you know, putting a key safe in, um, arranging shopping or cleaning services, doing, doing a um, you know, clearing out fridges if somebody's been in hospital for a while, doing an emergency shop so they've got everything when they come back home. Um, but it also might just be um, daily check-in calls just to make sure that they're managing okay. Do they need help with letters or correspondence that they've had come through while they've been in hospital? Um, and it's just to, to provide an extra level of reassurance to people when they come out of hospital rather than face a bit of panic of, of managing on their own and risk, run the risk of, of, sort of bouncing back into the, the hospital system. Um, so again, we can arrange services that we deliver ourselves, but, but also link people into um, partner agencies for any kind of support that they might need to, um, to keep that a successful hospital discharge. <clears throat> and similarly, oh, sorry, <laughs> similarly while, um, while we aim obviously to prevent that escalation into hospital, um, if we can identify people within the community that might be a crisis point, um, we will put that, that a similar range of services in place to stop um, somebody presenting at A&E. So again, that might be that somebody needs um, a key safe going in because carers need to, to, to start um, you know, pretty soon. It might be that they've been having falls and they need grab rails or a, an additional handrail up, up the stairs. With our handyman service, we can provide that and hopefully stop people going into hospital as well. So our Promoting Independent People, this has been a, a long-standing service that we've got and essentially it's our sort of casework social prescribing service, um, which really just aims to promote the independence of older people um, to live for as long as they can um, in their own homes and, and be active within their, their own local communities. So we work really closely with district nursing teams, adult social care teams, and we're also um, linked to the um, social prescribing service uh, within Oldham, uh, working in partnership with Action Together Positive Steps and um, Togmind. Um, 
And I suppose this is just whatever it takes to keep keep people at home and independent, we will try and um, put in place. So it might be that people are experiencing loneliness and isolation um, and they want to access local groups or activities. We will try and uh, sort of help identify um, groups and activities that they may be interested in in the local communities. And if confidence is an issue, we will um, escort people and provide that sort of hand-holding reassurance to any group or activity that they may want um, to try until this, you know, just to, to see what, what they think of it and if it's something they want to go back to. And if it is, then we will look at transport options. Do they need, you know, a, a, the, the bus pass renewing? Do they need regist registering with um, Ring and Ride? Do they need extra um, income to help uh, access groups and activities or pay for transport? So again, we will look at uh, attendance allowance claims, blue badges. Um, again, when we're on home visits, if they need any sort of grab rails, handrails, um, you know, timers, switches, anything like that, um, that sort of we can help with people within their own home, we'll, we'll provide under this service. Um, and we also have a, a PIP worker that works as part of um, the rapid response team. So providing um, sort of say a same day response to older people that may have come through the crisis enablement team. Um, so this, this worker doesn't carry sort of uh, appointments or have anything in the diary, they're just free to respond on the day to any sort of crisis that may come in. Um, to people in the, the health and social care service. So when I mention about um, supporting people to groups and activities, um, well, we will support obviously to, to external providers and that's where the, the social prescribing uh, partnership, partnership works really well. Um, we also, <laughs> we also, um, provide uh, assistance to some of our own social activities. Are you all right, Gemma? <laughs> That's great. Um, so one of these uh, activities that is, again, longstanding has proved very popular has been our enhanced lunch clubs. So these lunch clubs take place uh, daily in various locations around the borough. Um, and I think it's about five pounds forty um, for a lunch club. It's a three course meal uh, provided with um, an activity and um, they're, they're, they're just really popular for companionship, just getting out of the house one to two, two times a week. Um, in a lot of our lunch clubs, because they're long standing and they're well attended, we do have some block bookings set up with Ring and Ride. And if we can get people on to those block bookings, I mean, the demand is high, but if we can get somebody on a block booking, that makes it great because they can just, you know, they don't have to, it takes away the worry of having to ring through to Ring and Ride uh, a week before you want to, to go to a lunch club. So the aim would be always to try and support people to get on a, a block booking wherever possible. And again, through the, um, the PIP service, we will offer that introductory support for initial attendance at any activities um, and provide that hand holding and, and um, support and sort of settle people into activities if they're feeling particularly anxious about attending somewhere new. Um, we have the over 60 centre in on Broadway in Chatterton and this is just some of the activities that, that are run there. Um, on Monday there's a craft group, I think it's Monday morning. Friday afternoons there's a Just for Men group which is a, a male only group um, and it's sort of set out with sort of pub club type activity so there'll be a pool table dominoes cards um darts those kind of activities uh, are take place at, at that just for men group um, we've a friendship group which takes place on a thursday which is a little sort of less formal than a, the sit down um lunch club but it does provide um sort of companionship and uh, i think they get food like um soup and sandwiches rather than a, a, a sort of a, a three course meal and then we also have our older people's lgbt group um 
which is a, a peer led group that's uh, proved really popular and, and this has been able to sustain itself over uh, a number of years. Um, and it's just a, a safe environment for older people from the LGBT community to, to meet up, uh, provide some peer support, create friendships. And uh, they organize a lot of their own, um, you know, th days out, theatre trips, things like that. So um, it, it's, it's been really great to be able to sort of facilitate and, and um, have that, that group um, and recognise the challenges of older, the older people face within that community. Um, our Men in Sheds projects, we have two um, in Failsworth and in Greenfield. And these are run on um, afternoon and morning sessions. Um, so it's similar to the uh, Just for Men group in that it's a male only environment, but rather than sort of providing um, pub club type sort of social activities, this is more sort of hands on uh, task orientated. So a lot of woodwork takes place, some metal work. Um, a lot of the men sort of recondition the um, items that might be, you know, polishing up brass that, you know, if, if there's clocks or things coming in from the charity shop, a lot of them mend bicycles. Um, there's a there's a uh, there's also a train set. Um, I can't think of the word, is it not mobile train set, but you know what I mean? <laughs> One of those small train sets that takes place. And um, so, again, if somebody's got an interest in in um, model railways things like that but um yeah it's, it's much more sort of a hands-on um using the the skills that some of these men um may have had maybe within the workplace and we do find that it's particularly popular with men that have recently retired and it's just helped with that transition from a working life into full retirement um while still trying to keep their skills and uh, meet new people so our befriending service has been a long-standing service. It is volunteer-led, um, so it, it, the number of, of befrienders that we have available is dependent on the number of volunteers that we have at any one time. Um, obviously, during COVID, it was fantastic because we had people uh, on furlough who were able to offer up um, lots of time to help with befriending um, isolated old, older people during the pandemic uh, that had to sort of self-isolate and remain indoors. Um, however, you know, since, since restrictions have lifted and um, people have gone back to work, we are back to sort of, you know, always needing to recruit volunteers for this service. Um, um, so obviously the volunteers are provided with training and they have an ongoing um, support through our volunteer coordinator. Um, and are obviously all DBX checked to, to uh, work with um, older people. Um, our coordinator will obviously match volunteers to, um, to older people that are requesting the service. And where um, there has been a sort of a shortage of volunteers, we will try and after a while peer match um, support so that older people can maybe call each other um you know uh, if if the if they consent to sharing numbers and they can have that peer to peer peer to peer support um whilst we were able to move um volunteers on to to other people who may need the service um i believe i i may be mistaken but i believe predominantly we are still now because of the uh, shortage of volunteers offering um telephone befriending whereas I know before the pandemic um, we were able to do sort of house to house visits but I think with the demand on the services and I think you know as as older people have come out of the pandemic we are finding they've lost the confidence they are more isolated so it has taken um, a lot more uh, support to get them back into the community um, so the demand for um, home-based services like befriending is high, but, but I think because of the number of volunteers, we offer more telephone befriending service um, for the majority of the clients. I think that the, this service supports. So again, um, some of the services that we have to help people at home, we've got a shopping service. Um, so this is particularly aimed at people 
older people who can't get out to do their own shopping, who can't uh, access online shopping, um, and who may not have family or friend support to be able to shop on their behalf. So this service is, it is um, an online shopping service delivered by Tesco, but rather than the individual ringing or um, placing an online order, they ring, uh, they get a phone call every week from our Age UK Oldham Shopping Service. Um, so we get to know the customers, we get to know what they would normally have to eat or what they would normally have in their order. And then they tell us their order and we submit the online um, shopping order into Tesco's. That order is then um, delivered by Age UK drivers. So we're able to, um, at the point of delivery, sort of bring shopping into people's homes, put, put things away for them. You know, if there's out of date food in the fridge, we can throw that out while while the drivers are um, putting in the, the fresh produce. But also at the um, at the point of taking the order, you know, we're, because people use the service so regularly and we can get to know what they're normally ordering. It, it, it's a bit of a monitoring service where we it might be able to indicate sometimes that somebody's not eating as much as they would normally eat um, or, you know, they're just they're just not buying sort of um, the food that they would normally buy. So it kind of just um, alerts us to maybe follow that up. And, and then one of our PIP workers would, would go out and, um, you know, just make sure that everything's okay at home. There's been no major changes because obviously the, the shopping service is done over the phone at that point. Um, so it's always worth having a, a, a pair of eyes on the situation if need be, if there's any concerns raised with any major changes in that shopping order or again if the delivery driver notices anything amiss um when when they're at the property we can follow that up um our meal service was um born through the pandemic so when the um lunch clubs had to close um obviously people that would have been reliant on those lunch clubs for for meals um did without so our cooks instead of cooking for lunch clubs um, made the same meals but they were packed up and um, frozen so that they could be sort of stored by older people at home and that that um, service has proved really popular so it's it still continues today um, so it's home cooked food um, the, the kind of food that they would have in the lunch clubs um, as well as soups and desserts and um, I think it's I think for five meals it's 22 pounds a week um, and then a two pound delivery charge and that they can be delivered to older people throughout the borough and um, at least they've got you know if they use some people even though you can get ready meals they, they they might not like them if they're used to our lunch club food and are unable to attend lunch club this is a, an option for them as well so some of the preventative services that we have at age uk old and we've got the handy van service for sort of small odd jobs like curtain rails going up or washers on taps things like that um and then for jobs that are bigger than a handyman can can um, can carry out. We do have approved contractors um, like approved electrician, plumbers, um, and these are quite popular with older people who may feel that they're sort of at risk um, of being scammed or if they're anxious about getting tradesmen into the property, they, they will ring our handyman service and um, ask for information on one of our approved contractors who have obviously been approved by us and are accountable to us um, on the jobs that they carry out on, on behalf of um, Age UK Oldham customers. We also um, work closely with the Occupational Therapy Department at Oldham Council and um, are used by the um, OT team to um, carry out larger adaptations uh, within the home so it might be that somebody needs um, sort of a, a ramp building um, to access the property they might need some external grab rails um, you know down some steps 
uh, were often uh, asked to carry out those kind of works um, through the, the occupational department, occupational therapy department on a spot purchase basis. Um, and again, through our handy van service, we work really closely with Warm Homes Oldham. Um, so if people need support with, um, you know, boilers, heating, um, we work in partnership with Warm Homes. Um, and have done for many years, even before the, the sort of the cost of living crisis. Um, and again, for many years, we've been in preparation each winter for keeping older people warm and safe at home over winter. We've always carried out free home energy checks. Um, and obviously this has been expanded through the cost of living crisis. So again, um, if older people need um, energy saving light bulbs, timers so if they're getting up during the night um rather than have the the landing light on or a big light the sort of timers that um night lights sorry that they can have plugged in near the bed or on the land landing um timers as well so if they you know if they um if they need to switch off uh, lamps or um additional heating uh, like oil-filled radiators, but they can be put on time to help save energy. Um, and we'll provide the oil-filled radiators. We can, um, and we also look at, um, you know, if they're on it, you know, get a benefit check through the home energy check, because if they're on attendance allowance, it may well then open the doors up for additional support um, and get people on the priority registers with the utility companies as well. And then obviously, um, <laughs> sorry, then obviously over the last few months, we've had access as well to the Emergency Household um, Support Fund, which has been transformative really um, in how we've been able to just very, very quickly put in um, some emergency measures for people. Again, oil-filled radiators, but it might have been, um, you know, providing a key safe free of charge to, to get carers in place. Um, we've, we've used the fund to um, replace a lot of white goods for older people when the free, freezers have broken or, or fridges to make sure that they're still um, having access to fresh um, produce, but also um, to, as a storage mechanism for you know, cheaper provision of fruit and veg and, and frozen meals um, just to keep all the, the costs down as low as possible. But that's been, yeah, it's been a fantastic resource over the last few months uh, during this crisis. Um, and then I think this might be finally, uh, we have a fall, our falls prevention service. Um, falls prevention classes are delivered um, throughout the borough uh, in different locations. Um, with um, OCL instructors um, and uh, most people as well attending the falls class um, use the AUK transport if there's an issue in, in getting to these classes themselves. Um, referrals though to this um, service are made via GP or the uh, falls team physiotherapists. Um, but I think that might be it. Um, I think the next one, yeah, just about, um, you know, where we're contactable. Uh, we're based at Church Lane um, in Oldham, opposite the old salt cellar building at the back of Barclays, if anyone knows it. Um, it all these services that I've mentioned are on the website. It may be apart from some of the newer ones like the Home First service. Um, and um, and all the service phone numbers for those services and the service manager details um, will be on our website. Um, there's also our service guide, which is downloadable from the website as well. Um, but if you've, because there's been so many services and there's probably so many people delivering those services, if you need any more information, I'm happy to pick up um, emails that come through the, um, the info email address there if if there's any anything else um, that you need to know from from this presentation and um, I'll happily give you some more information but rather than issue you with different addresses and phone numbers I thought it would be easier to do it this way I have um, I needed to change the public office open because we are now open Monday to Friday um, we're nine till half four 
Um, so yes, the, 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 the building is fully open again to members of the public um, after the pandemic. And I think that is it, if anyone's got any questions.